Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. We have a big jam newscast this evening, so let's get started. First up, we begin with breaking news. Sexual assault charges drop against Kevin Spacey in Massachusetts criminal case. The sexual assault charges against actor Kevin Spacey in a Massachusetts criminal case have been dropped according to a court document filed by Dukes County District Attorney Michael O'Keefe An 18-year-old man, the son of former WCVB anchor Heather Unruh, accused the former House of Cards star of groping him at a Nantucket bar. During a July 8th court hearing, the accuser denied to invoke the Fifth Amendment after being pressed by Spacey's attorney about a missing cell phone containing messages that may be relevant to the case. Unroe and the accuser's father, Nick Little, both testified that they did not know where the cell phone was. During her testimony, Unroe admitted she was concerned about the contents of her son's cell phone, including offensive language from his Venmo account, and deleted some content. Lito testified that he never told his son to delete any text messages and said he was not aware of anyone deleting messages. The family dropped its civil case against Spacey on July 5th with prejudice, meaning that it cannot be refiled. Attorney Mitchell Gabardian said his clients dropped their case, civil case, because of the emotional roller coaster that the family has been on. Unroe said on July 8th that the case was not dropped because of a settlement. Spacey pleaded not guilty to that charge in January, and his lawyers have called the accusations potentially false. The case came to light when Unroe said Spacey got her son drunk in then sexually assaulted him in July 2016 at the club, car, restaurant, and bar. Dangerous hot weather expected in New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. The heat is coming, and the state's largest utility is asking customers to take some measures to conserve electricity, like increasing the temperature on the air conditioner when you're not at home. Making sure the filters and um, coils are clean, making sure that you seal uh, any gaps or cracks in your home so the air stays in. Also, use other appliances early in the morning or late at night. A typical peak demand in the summer is about 25,000 megawatts, extreme demand 27,000, and the all-time peak was 28,000 megawatts. The system has an expected available capacity of 32, so there should be enough power. But the heat can still be tough on certain people. Amongst the most vulnerable are infants, elderly, 
those with medical conditions. The Manchester Health Department says staying hydrated is particularly important, but to avoid certain liquids. We would suggest staying away from caffeinated beverages as well as alcoholic beverages because those will, you know, use more fluids in your body than they replenish. Cooling centers are being set up in communities across southern New Hampshire. In Manchester, pools are open seven days a week and located throughout the city. And no matter how you try to cool down, be on the lookout for heat-related illnesses. A rapid pulse, hot red skin, um, when you stop sweating and you experience chills, those are all you know, incredibly important symptoms of uh, heat-related illness. One other reminder from the health department, when you leave your car, make sure you check the back seat. There have been nine infant-related uh, heat deaths so far across the country, and never leave your pets in a locked car. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Vehicle strikes home in Rochester, police say. Police investigating separate crash scenes. Police said a vehicle struck another vehicle about 7.45 a.m. Wednesday in Rochester, causing the vehicle to lose control and crash into a nearby home. Police said no one was home at the time of the crash, and neither driver was home. Hurt. A short time later, the car that struck the vehicle that hit the house was involved in another crash. The driver of the other vehicle was sent to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Both crashes are being investigated at this time, police said. Police said the driver involved in both crashes was issued a summons for failure to yield. Rochester police are asking anyone with information about the crashes to call 603-330-7128. Tips can be made anonymously at 603-335-6500 or via text messages to crimes 274637 and with text for cash in the tip in the message. Portion of Portsmouth Road back open. Incident under control, police say. Section of Kearsarge Way now open. A section of Kearsarge Way was temporarily closed Wednesday in Portsmouth because of a police incident. The street was shut down between Market Street and the railroad overpass. Police announced after 2 p.m. that Kearsarge Way was reopened. Police added that the incident is under control. This is a developing story. Stay with us for more updates. Parade race schedule ahead of Sunday's Foxwoods Resort Casino 301. New Hampshire Motor Speedway has full slate of events for fans. Fans are making their way to Loudoun in anticipation for race weekend at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. The festivities kick off Wednesday with the Speedway Children's Charities Laps for Charities event. Thursday will include the NASCAR Cup Series Hauler Parade at 6 p.m. followed by live music later in the night. On Friday afternoon, drivers will complete for the pole position for Sunday's big race. There are plenty of races scheduled throughout the weekend, including three big races on Saturday and the Foxwood Resort Casino 301 on Sunday. Fans will be given the opportunity for autographs Saturday as part of 
the wider fan zone experience all weekend long. Forecasts are showing temperatures reaching 90s for the weekend, so be sure to plan ahead for the heat. Officials discuss scandal that rocked mass RMV. RMV head resigns after crash that killed seven in New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to that video from WCVB Boston. Well, Erica, officials sent their personal condolences to the families of these victims, but they know that it's not hardly enough. The failure that resulted in this tragedy was ultimately a failure of priorities, of processes, and of people. Seven people lost their lives in Randolph, New Hampshire on June 21st. The alleged driver is charged in their deaths. The registrar has resigned, replaced by a new acting registrar. But a solution to the problem of why Vladimir Zukovsky was driving in the first place is still in the works, following two attempts by the state of Connecticut to let Massachusetts know about his drunk driving arrest and no action by the registry. These are the types of things that infuriate taxpayers. At the MassDOT Finance and Audit Committee meeting, among discussion of 1,600 new license suspensions that went unnoticed, one board member noticed and blasted the RMV. I truly find it incomprehensible as to how someone, anyone, considered it acceptable to place suspension documents into bins, then place them into storage without being processed. Among other changes, an external audit is underway. That doesn't make up for the mistakes that were made before the acting registrar stepped in, but the fact that we have been able to accomplish what we have been able to accomplish in so short an amount of time does give me optimism that we will be able to fix this uh, process. Grant Thornton, by the way, is the company doing that external audit and hopes to have the first phase done in 30 days, the final phase in 60 days. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Blue Line service restored after power issue at Government Center. A power outage caused major problems Wednesday morning on a Boston subway line. The Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority said in a tweet that there was a power problem on the Blue Line at about 8 a.m. near the Government Center station. The T said Shuttle buses replaced service between the Manavrick and Bodwin stations. Service was restored at about 9.30 a.m. MBTA spokesman Joe Pestro said the power disruption was triggered by the failure of a piece of equipment on the train that was just outside the government center stop. About 200 passengers were safely evacuated from that train escorted through a tunnel by tea workers. Two other trains were on the track at the time. One was at a station and another was moved back to a station so passengers could be disbarred. We need better service on a faster timeline, Mayor Walsh says about MBTA. Let's take a listen to that video from WCVB Boston. Investigates celebrated as Boston's best, now nationally recognized. First to uncover the state police overtime scandal, and trusted to dig deeper. Five investigates only on WCVB News Center Five. 
More than five weeks after a red line train derailed at the JFK UMass station, passengers say they've seen only slight improvement in on-time service. It's like it took me like an hour and a half from South Station to get to Quincy Center like last week. Now, Mayor Walsh has written a letter to the head of MassDOT asking for the MBTA to try to improve service by adding more trains on the red line and nearby commuter rail lines. I think more trains would be great. I think more buses would be great. Um, I think giving people a reason not to drive would be great. Specifically, the mayor wants to add eight trains per weekday on the commuter rail's Fairmount line, create eight trips per day on the commuter rail's South Shore Limited to Braintree, and expand off-peak service on the red line. Do you think that would make any difference? Yeah, I think so. It's expensive to ride the commuter rail, though, as opposed to the red line. And now they just raise the prices. The mayor's office estimates the recent fare hikes could and should pay for his proposal, which he estimates at between $8.7 million and $9.4 million per year. In the meantime, the MBTA says red line repairs won't be done and service back to normal until at least after Labor Day. It's going to make it a tough for everybody to get around. And that was our David Beanick reporting. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at that U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Wednesday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you this Wednesday evening. And your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the red and went down. Your Nasdaq closed in the red and went down. S&P 500 closed in the red and went down. Gold closed in the green and went up. Oil closed in the red and went down. U.S. 10-year closed in the red and went down. Year slash USD closed in the green and went up. And VAX closed in the green and went up. Dow drops 115 points as stocks fell for a second day on concern about earnings. Stocks fell on Wednesday as the corporate earnings season rolled on with companies like CSX and Bank of America releasing their quarterly numbers. House to vote on Trump impeachment resolution over racist tweets. The House is expected to vote on a impeachment measure against President Donald Trump on Wednesday evening over the objection of Democrat leaders the first time the chamber will take up the division topic under Democrat control. And that is it for this Wednesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday evening, and I hope you all have a great rest of your week, and have a great week next week as well. I'm on vacation starting tomorrow, so there will be no broadcast tomorrow. I will be on vacation starting tomorrow all the way until all the way through next week and I'll be back on Monday July sorry no I'll be back on July 26th with more news I'll be on off from Thursday July 18th to Thursday July 25th I'll be back on July 26th with more news coverage and I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night, everyone, and bye.